My name is Emil Asher and I'm from Crest Vehicle Cooling. What causes a car to overheat is maintenance. People don't end up flushing the system occasionally, no antifreeze. A lot of people don't realize the importance of a radiator cap, and especially the right radiator cap. Some people just go end up going to the spares and buying a one bar radiator cap. Essentially, some of the vehicles use a 1.4. In the six cylinder BMW case, they use a two bar radiator cap. Good antifreeze with a good glycol level. You can't just use antifreeze and no water, so it needs to be a mixture. And I think this is why a lot of the guys they would prefer to use antifreeze from, let's say, VW or Toyota. And this is where I say there's radiators and then there's radiators. So a lot of the time you'll come across a cheaper radiator and a quality radiator. There are certain telltale signs that you can see where a supplier would literally eliminate some of the tubes to cut costs. Obviously, you at risk of overheating the vehicle because now less tubes means less water and we need water in the system to run cold air through the cooling system. So you either get a round tube or a flat tube. Tubes is where suppliers play around with costs of radiator. Not mainly uh, materials, but essentially the amount of tubes that they fit to a radiator. Well, if you still got the OEM radiator in the car, try and count how many tubes there are. And when you go and buy a aftermarket or a replacement radiator, make sure that it's got the same amount of tubes or similar. You don't want to buy a radiator that's got 70 tubes and you go buy a radiator with 50 tubes. Yeah, it's cheaper, but later down the line, uh, you could end up with issues. <laughs> oh my God. The core is the radiator, excluding the tanks. So fridges have cores, aircon units, Essentially where the tubes are, that is your core. Obviously your tanks are attached to the side. Some radiators have them to the bottom or the top. Um, some even have the filler cap. Some would have a radiator bottle on the side of like our E36s. My pipes went on my E36. That's what she said. <clears throat> New radiator, system flushed, uh, antifreeze. Then we discovered the cylinder was cracked. So now we have, at the same time, we've got oil and water mixing. Your pipe should get hard, but as soon as it gets to a point where the, it either pops the radiator bottle. So in many, many cases, E46 BMWs, they've got a common problem where it will either burst the pipe or it will burst the radiator bottle. This is why E46 four cylinder radiator bottle is extremely popular. We sell tons of them. Mainly radiator cap, water pump, they could be uh, rust or muck. Uh, in the system, that's why occasionally if you do a flush, um, I know a lot of the guys that love putting, take, uh, removing the inlet, the hose pipe, uh, the inlet um, radiator pipe, putting the hose pipe in there, start the car, run the tap, and you see all that muck comes out of it, and it really, really makes a difference. So uh, again, that's just preventative maintenance. These are things that, you know, will prevent your system from collapsing, and you know, you end up with terminal damage. This customer says cars run a little hot. I have no idea what it could be. In previous cases that where I've seen um, the system overheats, a lot of the time you'll notice that your engine becomes more noisy. Now there's excessive heat into the pistons. Your lifters start making a noise. And those are heat temperatures that, the, the, that your engine shouldn't see. And that is why your cooling system is there to run the engine at an optimal temperature and not over what it should be. So most people don't know what electrolysis is. We've had many cases where people ask, what is electrolysis? And a lot of the time we do our own radiator testing here. We pressurize the system and see where the system is leaking or pressurize the radiator. A lot of the time you'll find that radiators end up with a lot of black panels in the core. What this is, is actually electricity or electrodes running through the cooling system. And a lot of people make this mistake. Either the vehicle is in an accident or the vehicle got stripped, it's a project car, and something doesn't get time, uh, tied down correctly. And when I say something, most of the time, 90% of the time, it's a earth. So what happens is, if you notice, like in your E36, when you set the radiator down into the cradle, 
it, the radiator sets down on plastic grommets so that the radiator doesn't make direct contact with the body. You must remember your body of the, the chassis is earthed. There should be no loose earths, there should be no loose wires touching the radiator. The electrodes eat through the core of the radiator um, because now there's like, you can't feel it with your finger, you won't shock, but the, like, there's electricity running through your system and that causes to burn panels throughout the core and people will never realize how important it is to check for loose earths on, on, on a vehicle system. So uh, again, we get this all the time, but I mean, this is something you can simply Google. What is electrolysis in a vehicle? And you can read up all about it. Look, me personally, I don't like viscous, but they work amazingly. They got a high CFM, right? If you rev that car, my, we all know we don't like the sound of a viscous. When you rev that car, it sounds like a two liter Sierra coming down the road. You know what I mean, we ate it. But essentially there's no other electric fan that can do the exact job that a viscous can do. So they're very efficient, they work well, but they've got audible noise to them. Um, so if you can get an electric fan, which I highly doubt that can do a better job than a viscous, by all means, you know, there's pros and cons. A cowling is essentially, there's a cover behind your radiator that the fan sits in. So that directs all the airflow directly to the radiator or away. So either to or from, and a cowling plays a big role. If you're just gonna slap on a fan without a cowling, the air is just gonna blow in all directions and you want your air to go directly to your radiator. An intercooler essentially takes the air that's inside the system and when you're driving, the, you know, with the air coming from the front, it becomes charged air. Um, this is, I'm sure, you know, this is a, the turbo guys will give you a lot more feedback on this, but essentially you want charged air going through um, and obviously when you have cold, the cold, we all know, this is why guys run cold air inductions or um, what's the, the stack out the headlight. Everyone, everyone's after cold air, even the well penis. Um, so everyone's after cold air and uh, intercooler is one of the ways to make sure that we get cold or charged air into the system. So in the Hilux behind me, we are running a 3 liter diesel radiator in the V8 setup at the moment. <laughs> When the vehicle was previously a 2-litre VVTi, it ran a 2-litre radiator. But now, obviously, it's got a dual-core 3-litre diesel radiator. So it's a 33 more radiator. And obviously, now we're running dual fans to make sure we can keep the back as cool as possible. I and mean, obviously, a good antifreeze to make sure that we can protect all the internals for corrosion or rust. <laughs> no offense to the, the rest of the guys that, that are doing a rally cross at the end of the day, but you know, when the three of you are at it, it makes it a lot of fun. You know, like when Why am I getting hot all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs>